Hi there, I'm Timothy Linsdale, video producer and Christian. Well, as you know, what happens in California ends up spreading across the country like a couple other bad words I can think of. But uh, it, it has to do with cars. There's, I suspect there's no other state that has more cars and more highways for vehicles than any place in California. And sure enough, our local governments are doing all they can to take as many roads and lanes away as you can and parking spaces for our cars. I mean, we as Americans love that liberty. Uh, it's, it's in our foundation to be able to, you know, go somewhere we want to go, get something we want to get, help somebody want to help. Like today, I'm going to go down and help them carve turkeys for uh, Thanksgiving, feed the kids day. It's, uh, you know, you, you love that, uh, that liberty, that freedom. But, well, with the scare of global warming and all that, you know, they're taking more space and lanes away for cars, not for bicycles. Replacing them with bicycles. We'll see how that goes. Like and comment on my video, subscribe to my channel if you would, that'd be great. So what's, what's this replacing, uh, taking things away for cars and bikes? I listened to uh, a speech by the one of the mayors, local mayors recently, and he was talking about all the uh, bike lanes and build-outs and so forth going on on our streets. And he said it really originated from the state of California for global warming reasons. Uh, it seems that they've assumed that the more people they can put on bicycles, uh, the better it'll be. <sighs> um, you know, have you ever been in California and see rush hour? I'm talking hundreds of thousands of cars. Uh, could you imagine that in bicycles? <laughs> in a lane about what? What are they? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, Sandag, or the San Diego Association of Governments, has taken on a $279 million project to put in hundreds uh, of bike lanes, at least, I think it is. But it's, it's, it's crazy. Downtown, they've, they've had to actually parking in the middle of the street and bikes go down the side. And, of course, eliminated a lot of parking places. That's, that's a real joy. And <laughs> well... It's put these people in the crosshairs of frustrated groups uh, on all sides of the issue, business associations, homeowners, and even supporters of cycling aren't being pleased. The issues are so contentious that prominent advocates refuse to go on record for the story. <laughs> Several elected officials also declined requests. Oh, boy. I, I like that when our uh, leaders uh, think they don't have to... Uh, comment on what they're doing <laughs> wow so on it goes so the rest of you in the country prepare yourself uh, apparently again this is coming from uh, global warming issues uh, wanting to eliminate fossil fuels uh, replace fossil fuels with wind and solar energy we've been through all that mess uh, this uh, particular thing was approved by sandags uh, regional bikeways program in 2013 they envisioned a 77 mile network uh, seven of miles of which definitely shelved <laughs> uh, sorry it wasn't hundreds it was it was 77 okay at the same time the agencies burned through 123 million dollars and got pretty much nothing spent mostly on designing projects okay some of the bottlenecks in this progress seems to be in the city of san diego in the government. Oh, really? Is there a surprise there? Uh, three quarters of the transportation planning agency's projects are located in this office. Now, many of the envisioned lanes run through dense urban neighborhoods, uh, already grappling with limited parking and rush hour issues. This reminds me of the uh, articles I did on uh, stories on uh, uh, burying power lines. It's wonderful, you know, that all the power lines in my neighborhood are buried. They're not hanging over us. Uh, that stuff is very expensive. It's very expensive to repair, uh, very expensive to install. So it's, uh, it's a complicated effort. It costs a lot of money and time and planning. And that's the same with the bike thing. All the roads and streets and everything is designed for cars and parking. 
Now you're going to try to fit bicycles in that. Uh, as many communities around us are uh, making that endeavor. And of course, uh, the state is the one that really started this with uh, global warming uh, um, efforts uh, to shift from uh, fossil fuels to renewable energy. And of course, trying to do that with bicycles. Uh, what's the chance of doing that with bicycles? <laughs> How are you going to go shopping? Some of us are old and infirm. Um, how many other things I can think of? Uh, losing the liberty of being able to go wherever you want to, when you want to go to. Um, like going to the uh, chick or turkey carving thing I'm going to today for uh, feed the kids for Thanksgiving. I can just get up and go when I want to go, you know. And uh, give me an opportunity to, to donate and help when I can. A uh, car helps me to do that. So they're struggling with their projects. The city of San Diego has had plans to do more than double its roughly 500-mile network. Uh, they created new routes and about 30 miles of uh, street so far. Uh, created What did they say? Created new routes on only about 30 miles of street compared to the 500-mile network of bike lanes since 2013. Now, if that doesn't sound confusing enough about what they're doing, a uh, steep learning curve, it says. Creating bike lanes may seem as simple as pie. Painting roads in white stripes should be no problem. <laughs> Government agencies approach the separate riders from vehicle traffic. That's an issue. How are we going to keep people from getting run over on their bikes? There's one place I know. There's a shopping center close to me. It has a bike lane to it. And, it, you know, when you get down to the end of the bike lane and it's... Uh, got the little broken stripes, so you can pull in at that point. Well, if you're pulling in up ahead into the bike lane, that's illegal. And they do it every day. They're lined up in that bike lane, trying to make a right turn into the into the uh, uh, strip mall there. <laughs> in fact, I've seen cops stop there, park, pull everybody over, and give them a ticket. Boy, I bet you'd be thrilled about that. That's why I don't like going down there. At least on that part. So on they go. Uh, let's see. Sandag's blueprints uh, have not only embraced the approach of calling for complete overhauls of streets and sidewalks and crossings, but displaced dozens of parking spots. And that's that's what's got people revved up. If you go downtown, it's already bad to park. And the price of parking is stunning. You know, the whole system is designed to get you out of your car into the trolley, onto a bike, anything other than driving your car. Well, you know, if, if we rush along and get electric cars, won't that uh, solve issues and we won't need the bike thing? I don't know. We'll find out. Huh? <laughs> so on it goes. They're trying to make it work. They say uh, uh, they have a lot of uh, high-paid attorneys, and designers, so every day I can slow them down to costing them a lot. And that's one of the uh, Benjamin Nichols Association's executive director said that's his executive, or I'm sorry, that's his activist strategy. And that's 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 what he's going to do. He's going to give uh, Sandag a bad, t bad time, and uh, hopefully somehow something's going to change. <laughs> they didn't probably solicit enough information. They thought everybody would love doing this, and it would be no problem. This sounds like horrible planning to me. Uh, nothing new there. So the agency has dramatically changed its approach to the bikeway project over the last year from these issues. For example, Sandeg agreed in December to transform the west side of the normal, is one of the streets there, into a pedestrian promenade as part of another bikeway project in Hillcrest community. The plan, which will add parking bought the agency a significant amount of goodwill in the neighborhood. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh boy, how can we, how can we fool them this time? <laughs> so on we go. Well, anyway, hopefully uh, we can still have a street to uh, drive on. And uh, yeah, I, I, have, I like to bike and go on the, the, uh, the bike lanes, I understand that. And some of the main ones they have, you know, where there's actually like a mini highway that go around the bay and things like, yeah, those are great. There's nothing wrong with that. 
but when you're disrupting the main form of transportation to the nth degree in some places, I see some difficulties. Anyway, uh, let's see what they finish with. There's real progress that's happening in ways that we didn't see just a few years early, he said. The political dynamic has changed. You have elected officials saying it's important for safety, it's important for climate. And there you go. I don't know, does this make any sense? Well, it's California. <laughs> Some call it Cala, what is it? Cala Unicornia, something like that. <laughs> oh boy, California. Well, the rest of you across the country might be prepared for having to get your bike out and ride it through the snow drifts up there in the winter country. Well, you know, I remember a guy when I lived in Jackson, rode a bicycle year-round, used to put a big bucket of rocks on the back of his bike, so when the streets were slick, he had some traction. But he was the only guy in town. <laughs> ah, God bless him. God bless all you bike riders. Well, I guess we're going to need it, huh? Hey, thanks a lot for listening. Like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, like and comment on my video. And... Uh, Get out there and see what you can do on your bike and make it a great day. <laughs>